study the chapter matter in our surroundings what is matter matter can be defined as anything that occupies space and has mass look around yourself whatever you can see can be characterized as matter your pen your books the computer the plants animals water particles of sugar sand everything is matter let us try to understand the physical nature of matter matter is particulate in nature this means that matter consists of particles for example if you put a drop of black ink or black water color in water the color of the water turns black this happens because the particles of black color mix with the particles of water now if you add more water to this colored water it will also show the presence of color maybe in small amount but it will show if you keep on adding water to it presence of color can still be seen this means that the size of particles of matter is very very small and that they can be broken into further particles as well let's study the characteristics of particles of matter salt gets dissolved or mixed in water this is because the particles of water have space between them the particles of the salt get into the spaces between the particles of water and a mixture of salt particles and water particles is formed by this we can conclude that particles of matter have spaces between them particles of matter are in motion all the time that means they possess kinetic energy kinetic energy can be defined as energy due to motion the particles of a matter intermix on their own with other particles of a matter for example salt in water various gases in the air ink in water The process of mixing two different types of particles together is called diffusion. Diffusion becomes faster on heating. This is because the kinetic energy of particles also increases on heating. Therefore, the second characteristic of matter is that the particles of matter are continuously moving. third characteristic is that particles of matter attract each other the particles of matter have a force of attraction between them this attraction holds them together the amount of this force of attraction between the particles varies in different forms of matter solids liquids and gases are the three forms of matter particles of solids have the highest force of attraction between them therefore there is almost no space between the solid particles that is why solid objects cannot flow there is very less kinetic energy amongst the particles in solids they are generally arranged in a specific order thus they possess a specific shape solids cannot be compressed the particles of liquids do not have very high force of attraction between them therefore there is only little space between them and due to this liquids can flow they cannot be compressed that is why they are also called fluids liquids have a fixed volume but do not have a fixed shape
the arrangement of particles of liquids is never fixed you might have seen that liquids take the shape of the container in which we put them this is because the particles of liquids have a high kinetic energy they always keep moving the phenomenon of mixing of particles of different substances is known as diffusion diffusion takes place because of the movement of particles of matter particles of solids liquids and gases can diffuse with the particles of liquids this is so because there is space between the particles of liquids so particles of other matter can slip into these spaces example of diffusing solids into liquids is mixing sugar in tea mixing ink in water is an example of diffusing liquids into liquids example of diffusing gases into liquids can be the presence of oxygen and carbon dioxide in water the particles of gases have the least force of attraction in them we can move our hands easily in the air can't we this is because the particles of air are loosely bound gas particles have a lot of space between them and they can move freely in any direction therefore they do not have a fixed volume or a fixed shape since there is a lot of space between the particles of gases different gases can diffuse into each other easily kinetic energy between the particles is the maximum in the case of gases therefore particles move freely at high speed can matter change its state yes water exists in three states ice which is solid water which is liquid water vapor which is a gas this proves that matter can change its state now let us understand how does the change of temperature affect the matter what happens to matter when we heat it when we heat solids the kinetic energy between the particles of solids increases which decreases the force of attraction between them they start vibrating and changing their positions slowly due to heat the particles become free and a solid converts into liquid the temperature at which solid melts to become a liquid at atmospheric pressure is called the melting point For example, the melting point of ice is 273.16 Kelvin. The process of melting of a solid into liquid is called fusion. In the melting process, once a solid reaches its melting point, its temperature does not increase further. So where does all the heat go? The heat present in the solid at time of melting is used by the particles to diminish the force of attraction between each other. The heat energy is therefore considered as hidden. The heat energy which is used to break the force of attraction between the particles of matter is known as the latent heat. And the amount of heat energy which is required to change 1 kg of a solid into liquid at atmospheric pressure at its melting point is known as the latent heat of fusion just like in solids as the kinetic energy of particles of liquids increases the force of attraction among them decreases and they start moving freely 
As we keep on supplying the heat, a point comes where the particles overcome the forces of attraction completely. This is when a liquid starts changing into gas. The temperature at which a liquid starts boiling at a atmospheric pressure is known as its boiling point. The boiling point of water is 373 Kelvin. The amount of heat energy required to change 1 kg of a liquid into a gas at atmospheric pressure at its boiling point is known as the latent heat of vaporization. Let's see what happens when we decrease the temperature. If we talk about gases, the kinetic energy between the particles decreases as they turn into a liquid state. The process of converting a gas into a liquid by cooling its temperature is called condensation. The formation of clouds is due to condensation of water vapor from the earth's surface. Moving on to the effect of decrease in temperature in liquids, the kinetic energy between the particles decreases and they turn into a solid state. For example, the formation of ice. Decrease in temperature can also cause sublimation. Sublimation means change of state of a gas directly into solid and vice versa. For example, camphor is a solid that directly evaporates into the air without changing into a liquid state. Therefore, by increasing or decreasing the temperature, we can change the state of matter into one another. Let's find out the effect of change of pressure. By applying pressure, we can bring the particles of matter close to each other, thereby increasing the force of attraction among the particles. When we compress or decrease the temperature of a gas, the gas changes into a liquid. Carbon dioxide can directly turn into gas by decreasing the pressure to one atmosphere in solid form. Carbon dioxide in solid form is known as dry ice. Evaporation Evaporation is the phenomenon of change of a liquid into vapors by any given temperature below its milk boiling point. We already know that particles of matter are never at rest and that they possess different amounts of kinetic energy. The particles of liquids have more kinetic energy, therefore they are able to overcome the forces of attraction and convert into vapor without any external forces. Of evaporation depends on different factors like change in temperature, surface area, humidity, and wind speed. Rate of evaporation increases when there is an increase in surface area. This is because the particles have more space and thus can evaporate easily. Rate of evaporation decreases as Humidity is decreased as water content in air is more, so evaporation decreases. With increase in temperature, the rate of evaporation also increases. This is because kinetic energy among the particles increases. With increasing wind speed, also the evaporation rate increases. Because water vapors are blown away by winds, allowing more evaporation. Do you know that evaporation causes cooling effect? The process of evaporation uses the energy of liquid particles. 
therefore the particles absorb energy from the surroundings in order to compensate the energy that is being lost in the process of evaporation this results in cooling of the surrounding area for example our palms feel cool when we put some acetone or nail polish remover on it some people sprinkle water on their roofs or ground on sunny days to cool the area we are able to sip hot tea faster in a saucer than in a cup can you tell why we wear cotton clothes in summer this is because we perspire more in summer as the sweat evaporates it takes heat from our body surface and leaves our body cool cotton can absorb the sweat easily and exposes it to the atmosphere causing evaporation to take place easily thus in turn keeps our keeps us cool in summer days have you ever observed that the water droplets appear on the outer surface of a glass having ice cold water why does this happen this happens because there are water vapors present in the air when they come in contact with the walls of the glass that has ice cold water in it they condense Thank you.